Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on using the all-important calculate function within DAX. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll start with introducing the syntax of the calculate function, and then we'll go on to do three things to the query context. We'll learn how to replace it in a pivot table, how to remove it altogether using the all function, and how to build on what's already there using the values function. So let's get started. What I want to do is introduce the calculate function before doing some more complicated things with it. It's easily the most important function in DAX. The data model I'm using is the same as it was in the previous tutorial in this series. So you can see I've got the 11 tables linked together. If you haven't already created this data model in the previous tutorial, I'd recommend doing so for two reasons. One is it will enable you to follow this tutorial but the other is you'll have a much better chance of understanding what I'm saying in this one if you've seen the explanation of the concept of query context and tuples contained in the previous tutorial on calculated fields. What we're going to do is recreate the sum of quantity which was already created as an implicit field there. To do that I'm going to create a calculated field and I'm going to put it within the transactions table because that's the level of granularity at which I'm calculating things. I'm going to call it QTY for total quantity. And the formula I'm going to type in is going to begin with the calculate function. You can see the syntax for this function is that it takes an expression followed optionally by one or more filters. And what they will do is change the filter context or the query context in a way I'll explain in later parts of this tutorial. For the moment though, I'm not going to include anything but the expression. So what I'll do is sum I'll type in an open square bracket to bring in the quantity. I'll close the brackets to say that's what I'm summing. And I press shift and enter to insert a new line. And I'm going to close this bracket, which will close the calculate function. I'll format that to look nice. And then choose OK. It should be no surprise that it's giving exactly the same result as just summing the quantity. What I've done has been completely pointless. I've just reproduced something in a more complicated way when it already existed. What I'll now do is show how to add filters to amend the filter context. It's time now to stretch the calculate function by amending the filter context or the query context. What we're going to do is show for each cell in the pivot table what fraction it represents of the total sales for mammals. If all goes well, you would fully expect this entire column to be 100% because the total sales of mammals as a percentage of mammals is obviously 100%. This figure, for example, should show 79 over 428 as a percentage, because that's the total sales for amphibians divided by the corresponding total sales for mammals for the current pivot table's query context, i.e. still maintaining the constraint that the quadrant has to be east and the centre type has to be shopping centre. In calculation terms, what we're doing is calculating A over B, where A, the numerator, is the total sales for the current pivot table cells query context, and B is the same thing, but switching the species from amphibian to mammal. Let's look at that in terms of data. I've got an extract of all the rows making up the transactions for this pivot table. I've set a filter to show east shopping centre and amphibian, and if we scroll down to the bottom of the list, you'll see the figure at the moment is 79. If I change the species name to a mammal, the figure at the bottom will change to 428. So that's where the two figures 79 and 428 are coming from. In terms of tuples, what we're trying to do is this. The numerator is the figure for shopping centres for the east quadrant for amphibians and the total number is 79. The denominator is the same thing for shopping centres, east quadrant, but this time just for mammals. We've changed the query context. I know I keep saying that, but it's so important. The total for that is 428. The percentage figure should end up being 18.46%. <clears throat> OK, with all that preamble, let's actually have a go at doing it. To create, which is probably going to be much easier than explaining it, we'll create a calculator field and we'll put it in the transaction table as usual. I'm going to call it um, ratio and for the numerator I will use the pre-existing field we've creating, created called quantity. 
For the denominator, I'm going to press Shift and Enter to put it onto a separate line to make it easier to read. You don't need to do that. And what we're going to do is calculate something. The thing with calculating is the total quantity. So I can just type some of the quantity. But what I'm now going to do is add an additional uh, argument to the calculate function. Now when I press comma, you can see that it's lost the IntelliSense, it's lost the auto-completion. So to try to get that back, I'm actually going to join the line together again, and then type the comma in. And eventually, if I backspace and delete that, I'm hoping I might be able to get it back. And I'm leaving this in because I think it's a fairly representative of how the expression editor works. And finally, I've got it back. The filter I'm going to put in in this case is going to be that the species has to be mammal. So I can type a single apostrophe to bring up the species or the list of tables, SP to choose the species table, and double click on the species name field. And that has to now be mammal. It's important to realize that what I'm doing there is replacing whatever previous constraint was provided by the pivot table cell with a new one for the species name. So I'll lose any previous constraint. For example, I'll lose the fact that I was just looking at amphibians. I can then close the brackets to close the calculate function and check my formula makes sense, which it does. I can choose to display that probably as a percentage, choose a number of decimal places and then choose OK. And if I get rid of the quantity because it's muddying things up a bit, you can see my figure there is 18.46% as predicted. And as predicted, you can see my figures for mammals are all 100%. And what's amazing about Power Pivot? is that these figures will stay the same, whichever combination of filters, rows and columns I choose, it will always correctly calculate the correct percentage. I guess that's obvious, but I'm always impressed by it. The previous bit of this tutorial replaced the query context for a particular dimension. This part is actually going to remove it altogether using the all function. What we're going to do is show the total sales as a percentage of the total for all quadrants. That should mean that this cell will display the number 79 divided by the total four quadrants 982. In tuple terms, this is what's going to happen. The numerator will be the total sales for the particular query context, so for the shopping centre, for East and for Amphibian. And the denominator will be the same thing, but with the constraint by quadr quadrant removed, so giving it for all quadrants, which will give 982. So the percentage we should be seeing for Amphibians should be 8.04%. Let's see if it does. So what we're going to do is create a new calculator field, go to the Power Pivot tab as ever, choose to create a new calculator field, I'm going to put it in the transaction table, and I'll call it percent of all quadrants. It seems to have gone in in capitals, it must be important. What I'm then going to do is refer to the total quantity. I can do that by typing a square bracket to bring up the list of fields, and I'm going to choose a pre-created calculator field I've used earlier. I'll then divide that by something, and the thing I'm going to divide it by will be a calculate function. I'll type in another space to make everything easier to read. I can use the QTY field again to demonstrate the total quantity. And the constraint I'm going to apply to that is going to use the all keyword. You can see there's always an also an all except function. And what this does is remove all of the constraints apart from one. I've never actually managed to get it to work though, so good luck with that one. For the moment, I'm just going to choose all, put in an open bracket, and the table I'm going to relax the constraint of is the quadrant table. So I can type in a single apostrophe to bring up the list of tables and double click on the quadrant name field. I need to close two brackets, one to close the all function, and then one again to close the calculative function. Having done all that, I can click on check formula to check it's going to work. It's looking good. I can format it, perhaps as a percentage, and then choose OK. And if all goes well, I'll see 8.04% for the amphibian figure. You'd expect the figures across the bottom here to say 100% for everything, because this is looking at the total for all quadrants divided by the total for all quadrants, which is bound to be 100%. So far in this tutorial, we've replaced the query context and we've removed it altogether. What we're now going to do is to edit it to build on it. The example we're going to do is to show the total sales, but excluding the south quadrant. If all goes well, you would expect these figures to be zero, but all the others to be exactly as they are shown there. All won't go well though. 
We're going to create a new calculated field, and to give you some idea of the impending do my field, I'm going to call this one wrong. We'll create the calculated co expression, so calculate, and we'll sum the quantity, as we have done before. For some reason, for a change, I'm going to use the quantity field. I can then apply my filter, and my filter, you would have thought, would just be to say that the quadrant name doesn't equal to south. I've used less than greater than to denote does not equal to, and I've been careful to put the word south in the correct case because it is case sensitive. What could possibly go wrong? Let's find out. If I choose OK, it gives me the wrong answer. That's what goes wrong. To see why, let's consider what this figure is actually doing. It's taking the current query context and removing any constraint implied by the quadrant. So it's removing the fact that it should be for east and replacing it with a different constraint, which is that the quadrant should not be south. Well, if we sum these three figures, i.e. the quantity for every quadrant except south, it gives us, as shown in the status bar here, 578. And that's the number it's calculating for every single quadrant. The reason it's going wrong is we wanted to keep the existing query constraint and to edit it, and that's what we're going to do now. So my sense of impending doom has lifted, and I'm going to call this one right. And what we can do is add in an additional argument in the middle. What this will do is say, take the values function and keep the current values for the quadrant and then apply the not equal to south constraint. So what this is going to do is sum the quantity, keeping any constraint imposed by where it is in the pivot table, and in addition to that, applying an extra constraint that the quadrant shouldn't be south. Now I'm more confident about this, I think it's going to work. Um, at least it will when I display it in my pivot table. And you can see I've got exactly the same figure for every quadrant apart from south, for which is actually blank, which is what I was expecting. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.